it's about time to get started. Uh, you probably all of you have met Mike already. <laughs> uh, he's a lead trainer at uh, SpiderTools.com, uh, which provides Linux training, including Nagios Basic and Advanced Training. And while Mike will be talking today uh, about SNMP. Thank you. Okay. Um, we're going to do some just some basic things with SNMP. Uh, think of it this way. Think about if you walked into a large library. I mean, let me ask, first of all, how many of you are using SNMP currently? Okay. So most of you have a, an, a, either a basic idea or a good idea how it works. Um, and what, let me say one thing in terms of XI specifically. XI is going to make your life considerably easier, especially if you start to play with traps. So that's just a plug in for XI. But when I teach traps with Nagios Core, most people really have some difficulties unless they've got some experience. We're not talking about traps today, but I'm just just a little bit of insight is if you were considering XI, the trap issue is going to make your life a lot easier with XI because it's all set up for you. Um, so we want to talk about um, this concept of SNMP. And uh, I want to think in terms of a library. Uh, at one time in my life, I was had the opportunity to go to the University of Washington Library. And it was just a huge, massive library. You've probably been in a library similar. You walk in and you look at the massive shelves and the, the floors that are uh, leveled with uh, books all over the place. Now, just imagine if those books, they removed all of the labels, all of the titles, all of the authors, all of the numbering system, and they took dump trucks and dumped them all into a big building, and you were looking for something. When most people start with SNMP, that's how they kind of see it, is this big jumble of stuff that's unreadable, unorganized, inefficient, and very intimidating. If you can switch your thinking a little bit, and start thinking, if, if you're new to SNMP, if you can start thinking in terms of a library, you'll see that SNMP is very much organized similar to a library. So if you go to a large library, you walk in the doors and you immediately you say, well, I'm looking for a book. Well, you're going to go to different sections. Let's say you're looking for a book uh, on the Monitor in the Merrimack Civil War. Well, the first section you're going to go to is American history. And then you're going to go to Civil War. And you're going to start looking specifically for areas that are going to provide you this one book that's going to provide you the information that you're interested in. This is very much what SNMP does. It is this huge database. Now, depending on the device, depending uh, on the, the MIBs, all the stuff that goes with it, you could have thousands, six, ten thousand of these books in this library. And they're not easy to read or easy to understand at, point, at times. But if you think of um, SNMP as a library, and so if you think about American history, ha, huh, here is a MIB management information base, and I'll talk about this a little bit more in a minute, but there is a section called <coughs> MGMT. The numbering system that relates to it is .13612. You know that when you go into a library, you're looking for a book, you, in a big library, you don't walk around, wander. You might if you've got days to waste. Usually, even in the old days, and some of us can remember the card catalog, Dewey Decimal System. But it was a numbering system that worked. Today you walk in, you pick up a, 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 a computer, and you search for your book, and you're looking for a, a numbering system to find the specific book you're looking for. This is what you're doing with SNMP. You're looking for some way to find that piece of information that you need 
about your device. So you may drill down a civil war. Here's another uh, MIB-2. Now, MIB-2 is really interesting because it is really focused on the network interfaces. As Nagios people, that's one of the things you're interested in. Is the port up? Is it down? What's the traffic happening on this port? Is it administratively up, down? What's going on with this port? If it's a Cisco router, whatever it is. There, there's things you want to know, and MIB-2 is where a lot of the things that you're interested in is going to be. And then you find an individual book. Now, when you look at this, let me come over here so I can talk about this a little better. When you look at this um, object, OID, object identifier, when you look at this, you're going to see, you see, first of all, the MIB. This, think of the MIB as a category in a big library. So Disman event MIB. And then you have sys uptime instance. Now you notice that it's case sensitive. This is one of the things that can trip you up when you're trying to work with this, is to, if you forget that it's case sensitive, it's gonna, it's gonna mess you up when you're trying to search for things. So, sys uptime instance, time ticks, what you're gonna end up with is, hey, this server's been up for nine hours, 30 minutes, etc. Now, if you take this object or book in the library, and if you were going to look at it, look it up in your card catalog or on your computer, you're going to look up a number or a title. You have both options. There's the title. There's the number. Now, you can see that the numbering system is not intuitive. It just isn't. And this is one of the things that you're going to have to live with and not be intimidated by because each object also comes with a number. And so if you think in terms of a library, when you go to a library, you are not intimidated by that Library of Congress number in front of that book. It doesn't seem to intimidate you at all. You also see the, the title of that book. But for some reason, when we come to SNMP, people are intimidated by the numbering system. It's the same thing as if you were in a library. Here is part of the numbering structure. It's a hierarchical tree. So it starts with dot one. That's ISO, the organization that set it up. Dot org, DOD. Where did internet start? Department of Defense. And you see internet underneath it. You start to see, oh, oh yeah, there is some logic to this numbering system. And so you come down, and here you can see I mentioned MIB2. There's the number there. Management, and there's management uh, MIB there. This tree is not something that initially that you need to worry about. Forget about the tree. It's not going to help you understand SNMP initially. Uh, what you're looking for is those individual books those individual pieces of information that will help you understand how to monitor what you want to monitor on that device. So here's that MIB2 section. Now again, if we think of MIB, Management Information Base, as a section, and underneath MIB2 there are additional sections. I mean, this is the kind of thing in this tree where you can keep on drilling down for almost ever. So you've got MIB 2.1. That's going to give you all your system information. Uh, and we're talking about uh, the operating system, who's the, who's the contact, that kind of information. You've got IP at, uh, access, IP addresses, that information. You've got MIB 2.2, which is interfaces. So every device you're looking at could have anywhere from 2 to 48 interfaces on it. You could be looking at VLANs. You could be looking at all kinds of different things. But it just to show you that these sections are just sections where you can help you hone down where the information that you need could be located. All right.